Welcome to It's On Talk Show. And today's show topic is about prayer. This is the most important show that I've ever done because God really wants to, to bless you. He wants to hear your prayers and he wants to answer your prayers. Uh, today I have a very special guest, a woman that knows God, that knows how to get a prayer through. And I'm telling you, she's anointed and blessed of God. And she's going to intercede for you. She's going to communicate with you today so that God can answer your prayers. I'd like to welcome Minister Letitia Williams. God bless you. God bless you. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. That's great. Um, I'm so glad to have you back on the show. Uh, and this again, this show is about prayer. And you are the prayer warrior. Uh, a woman that, can, that gets prayers answered. And moreover, people know your reputation as a prayer warrior. And I, I, I'm telling you, God wants to make a difference today. He, want, he wants to answer somebody's prayer. Yes. Yes. Um, and I, I, I have to ask you to start this show with a word of prayer. Absolutely. Please. Father God, in the precious and holy name of your beloved son, Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, the sustainer of our lives. God, we give you praise. Dear Lord God, we bless you on tonight. We thank you for another opportunity, another privilege to come before your throne, oh God. We bless you tonight and we thank you, Father, for giving us this time of prayer, to talk about prayer, oh God, because prayer is so prevalent in our land today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray even now for everyone who is watching this show. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will release ministering angels to minister to them right where they are father we pray even now for johnny who is the, who is the host of this show god bless him strengthen him we thank you oh god for giving him the vision to talk about prayer we thank you for giving him the insight oh god to make prayer the topic of conversation god we thank you for him tonight and we pray even now lord that you would be in the midst of us because you said in your word where two are gathered in your name you would be in the midst so we pray oh god that you would be in the midst of us tonight as we talk about prayer prayer as we minister to those oh God encourage those that prayer can be answered that if we pray and seek your face you will answer our prayers so God we thank you for this opportunity we pray that you would anoint this show and that you would bless every person watching it is in Jesus name we pray amen amen bless you praise God um, uh, what a wonderful prayer um, so again today uh, somebody's out there that that's that's confused about is God hearing my prayer? Uh, is my prayer getting through? Uh, uh, what? It, how should I pray? And so they they want to reach heaven, but but they don't know how. And, and could you give some instructions about prayer? Absolutely. Prayer is our personal communication with God. Prayer is not. You don't have to pray using big words being really articulate prayer is our personal communication with God is talking to the Lord is spending time communicating with God is talking to him is praising him and I always often encourage people that when you go before God in prayer mm -hmm. that your first thing that you do when you go to God in prayer is adore God yes love on him acknowledge his holiness reverence his glory because when you come before God you should always come with a heart of reverence you should never come before him in prayer making a request or asking him for something or you're in desperate need of his attention your prayer should always be adoring God first love on him let him know who he is let him know that he is God and that he is greater than your circumstance so when you come before the Lord in prayer you come first adoring him and when you come first and enter into that place of adoring God and reverencing God and celebrating him in prayer which puts your your issues of concern on the back burner initially because he already knows what it is that we're dealing with so when we come before him with a heart of reverence now you got his attention now you got his attention to hear your prayer request to hear what it is that you desire from him here's the situation there's a young man or young lady out there that that's going before the, the a judge and they just 
don't think that God can bring them out of this tough situation. Tell, tell them what God can do. God can do anything but fail. There is no failure in our God. When we pray, we have to pray with expectation. We have to also pray and trust the Lord that he's able to bring us out of whatever the situation is. And a lot of times as Christians and those who are not Christians, we pray believing that God can do it or not so much that he can do it because we trust ourselves. But no, the key is you have to trust God beyond what you physically see in front of you. And if a person that is facing, facing the judge or facing jail time, it's always good to grab an intercessor. Yes. Because intercessors, the intercessory prayer is, is a, on a whole different level than well, just prayer. Could you tell them what intercessory prayer is? Intercessory prayer is labor intensive praying. It is in a time where, like the pastors, our assistant pastors say at church, is entering into session with God on behalf of somebody else. So when we intercede on behalf of others, we are actually laboring. And if you use the women as an example who, who are laboring to have a baby, bringing forth that baby, it's labor intensive. It's hard when we labor before God in prayer on behalf of somebody else, meaning we stay there until the Lord moves on that person's behalf. And also intercessory prayer is when God can burden your heart for somebody that you don't even know That's right. That's to right. intercede for whether it's the president you don't know the president personally but God may burden an intercessor's heart to pray for the president and the Lord will burden that heart now sometimes when we talk about intercessory prayer or an intercessor mm -hmm. God may wake that intercessor up two, three, or four o'clock in the morning to pray for somebody. That's right. To labor intensive prayer because prayer, intercessory prayer is fervent, is passionate, is powerful praying for someone else. And so God is calling the intercessors yes. to step up and, and pray and intercede on behalf of somebody else. So we are called to pray intercede on behalf of others because if there's never been a greater time like we were discussing earlier yes. if there's never been a greater time for prayer and intercession that time is now you know so many people walk in fear uh, and not faith mm -hmm. and as a result because they're fearful they, they're sick and they're burdened down it they're, they're just afraid and it, they're truly in, in a place where they don't believe God can can hear their prayers uh, could you respond to that yes prayer in, when we look and we talk about prayer I said in the in the beginning that prayer is our personal communication with God mm -hmm. but the other thing that prayer does is prayer if you pray and consistent in praying and establishing a prayer life yes then you're what you're getting what you're doing is establishing a relationship with God that's right okay so when it is that we pray and establish a prayer life we are establishing a relationship with God which put us in a position and a posture to get God's ear mm -hmm. and therefore he responds to our prayers that's right so when we're in relationship with him because we are constantly communicating with him on a regular basis and we constantly praying and talking to the Lord because again that's our personal communication we're talking to him on a regular basis not just when we're going through something mm -hmm. that we want to get God's attention through prayer but you're establishing a prayer life every day if I meet if I've met someone on mm -hmm. on just meet and we start we have a conversation and we're talking mm -hmm. but we never communicate uh -huh. can we honestly say we're in a relationship right that's we can't be in a relationship because right. we don't communicate that's right so with God is no different right that's true he requires that communication and he requires that relationship so if we establish that relationship through prayer mm. then we can get God's attention and he will respond to us so you hear that you have to pray on a consistent base mm -hmm. and that way you gain a relationship with God because you're in communion with him and he is in communion with you. Yes. Um, here's a situation. Um, uh, let's say a church uh, goer, they are praying every day. Uh, uh, they're going through something and seemingly God is not answering their prayer. It's seemingly, that's yes. the key word that you yes. said, seemingly he's yes. not answering their prayer. A lot of times I think when we pray, we need to be specific with God with what we need. And that our prayers should not be meaningless repetitions. Mm -hmm. But our prayers should be heartfelt 
praying, consistent praying, but praying again with expectation and trusting that the Lord hears and will answer your prayers because he's hearing your prayers. And at the appointed set time, he will answer your prayers. Our prayers should be in alignment. If we're saved, if we've given our life to the Lord and we're establishing that relationship with God, then the Holy Spirit that's residing in us will commune with God on our behalf. If we pray, because sometimes we can't even get the words out, but the Holy Spirit will utter unto the Lord what it is that we stand in need of so when we pray we're praying with expectation and anticipation that the Lord will answer but our prayers should be heartfelt we should mean what we say and we should be sincere unto the Lord because he knows our heart he knows what we stand in need, in need of so he's always ready to fulfill the need and meet the need that we have because he's our God and he will truly answer our prayers you know recently I've experienced I've been, I pray a lot, and, and God didn't respond to me. But I believed, and I knew that mm -hmm. he heard me. Mm -hmm. And I did not get moved by that because, well, I have experience with God. But yes. some people go through that, and they think that um, God is out. He's not interested. Mm -hmm. So could you explain sometimes God will try you mm -hmm. by faith? Mm -hmm. He would definitely do that. He will not always respond immediately to our request That's right. but he will respond to it and it may not be the way you want him to respond but he will respond because in my own personal prayer life in my own personal time of prayer it was a point where I was really just laboring before God concerning my son mm -hmm. and I was praying and I was just praying it just looked like there was I was getting no answer getting no response from the Lord concerning my son because I wasn't seeing any manifestation yes. of what I was asking for in prayer and this went on for I know almost a year I'm just laboring in prayer for God but the Lord spoke to me and he said if I don't answer your prayer the way you want me to will you still trust me yes so the key is we want God to answer our prayers the way we want him to. Mm -hmm. But if he doesn't answer our prayers the way we want him to, will you still trust him? So your prayers need to be in alignment to God's good and perfect will. And how would that be the case if you're not trusting in him and leaning on him and allowing the spirit of God that is in you to minister what it is that you need? Jesus is our greatest intercessor because he sits on the right hand of the father, constantly making intercession for us. So he is already interceding on your behalf. That's right. So as in the earth realm where we are, your prayers are being heard, but you just have to wait on God and trust God and know that he has your best interest he knows what it takes to respond to your request he knows how to fix the situation that you're in he knows what it takes to do All it right. because he is the manufacturer of your origin so everything about you he knows every situation that you're facing he knows but the key about God is in regard to answering our prayer requests don't magnify your situation don't make your situation bigger than God. Make God bigger than your situation and watch him move. You know, they said you may, he may not come when you want him, but he, he's always on time. Always. And I'm a witness to that because he loves us so very much. And he, 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 he let this show happen today Amen. just because you have been praying. And he wants you to know that he, he did hear your prayer. And he wants you to know that you need more discipline, a more disciplined prayer life. Yes. And my fine sister, he is, has explained it very well about the discipline of, pr of prayer and having a relationship with God. And I'm telling you, you have a relationship, yeah, oh my God, he'll do wonders for you. Mm -hmm. You got to distrust him. Um, I, I'm, I'm so excited about uh, this show and prayer. Uh, because prayer works. Prayer not only changes some things, but prayer changes everything. Everything. You know, uh, yeah, a lot of people do. are very weary uh, with all of the signs of the times, mm -hmm. volcanoes or earthquakes, the mm -hmm. war, uh, uh, tornadoes. Yes. Uh, so how does a prayer life bring you peace in the midst of all this? Prayer brings you peace because in your time of praying, you can move from praying and talking to the Lord in prayer 
going into a place of worship because when we worship God and praying and worshiping God as well as praising God because during your time when you're adoring God when we talked about that that when you enter to, into that place of prayer that you should adore God so in adoring God you're getting into a place of worshiping God so when you're adoring on him that means you're worshiping him you're reverencing him and loving on him and celebrating him which at that point can take you into a place where you can tap into the realm of where God sits Ooh. in that eternal place that holy place place where nothing else matters nothing that's going on around you matters because nothing matters but being in his presence because in his presence is the fullness of joy as the word of God declares so when we go into that place of worship through praying and adoring God then you will see the things of God because God worship gets his attention that's it's right. worship that gets God's attention it was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who said to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible to be alive without breathing so prayer is needed and necessary and God is still hearing he is still responding to our prayer requests may not be when you want him to right. but he knows the appointed set time in which he need to move on your behalf to deal with your situation yeah because again so many people they want to their way they want mm -hmm. it now I need you to fix it right now God but God, like you said God is strategic mm -hmm. he knows what's going to happen a three months from now a year from now so he'll set up everything that will work in your favor mm -hmm. you know so that's having that prayer life and it right. will sustain you yes. it will keep you so you've got to believe you got to trust God in, in this prayer thing because I'm telling you it works Prayer changes everything, and God wants to do something for your life. He wants to bring heaven to you tonight. Mm -hmm. You're sitting right there. that You've been praying about something uh, and wanting God to move on your behalf. Just keep on praying. Keep on tonight praying. is a night of confirmation that God has heard you. Uh, and he's going to do it. Uh, this is the this is the best day of your life because God hears your pr your prayers and He mm -hmm. wants to change something for you. He wants to move on your behalf. See, uh, in the Bible says in the last days I put my spirit among all flesh, yes. and in this day God is doing some things. Mm -hmm. uh, he's He's setting up His kingdom, and He wants the people of God to to operate in this kingdom and to be kingdom minded mm -hmm. and but to be kingdom minded you must have that prayer life yes. in place yes. because God needs to commune with you mm -hmm. uh, because that's how he 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 um he ha he allows he allows you to operate for him and working in the capacity that he wants you to work in mm -hmm. um I'm telling you tonight is a great night Amen. could you elaborate on that yes in regard Tonight is a great night for prayer because prayer, as we was discussing earlier, is so needed and necessary. And I always encourage people in, the t in our teaching that when we pray, what we should do in establishing that prayer life and establishing that relationship with God through prayer, I encourage people that if any place in your home, any place, whether it's the bathroom, your bedroom, or, or chair in the corner or what have you set up a place where you can go to God in prayer that's your that's the designated the that's the yes that's the <laughs> designated place where you go and talk to the Lord just lay it all out to God just be transparent with God because he knows what it is that you need so when you set up a place in your home now you're going to pray throughout the course of the day the sun shouldn't come up and the sun shouldn't go down on any day where you don't talk to the Lord where you don't pray to him that's so right. set up that place in your house where you can't wait to get there to talk to God because relationship is being established when you do that with the Lord and God you'll find that throughout the course of your life that God will start dropping little nuggets in your yeah. spirit because now we're in relationship it was um who was it? it was Moses when God decided he wanted to just destroy the whole nation of Israel but Moses interceded that's right it went into session with God on behalf of the people of God to not destroy the people because of the relationship that they had Moses was able to communicate with God and God relented in other words he changed his mind and didn't destroy the people so that's the point of having that prayer life that establishes the relationship and this is directed to the saints of God yes uh, the Bible says, Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, yes. would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and heal the land. I I'm telling you that so much is going on in the world uh, right now that we as saints, we have the power to change things. 
on a global scale. But we all have to pray. Again, this is, this is for the saints that know God, that know the power of prayer. Your prayer has power. Your prayer can change things. And I'm asking everybody that knows God and understands the power, power of prayer to, be, to pray for the nation, for the city, for the state. Because your prayer, oh, God will move mightily. Yes. Can you talk about the power of of, of the people, of the saints of the Most High God and, and their prayers. When the saints of the Most High God come together with one accord and mm -hmm. pray, when we have one mind and we have our spirits connected in prayer, the hand of God will move in the situation that we're laboring for. Now, the other thing that, that we should do as Christians, uh -huh. as prayer, as intercessors or what have you, is fasting is a, vast, a very important part. Agreed. Of that prayer, um, of that prayer, uh, uh, can't get the word out of my I'm mouth. Sorry. But the prayer, it, it's it's basically a partnership right. that you have to get the results that we need right. when we go before God in prayer. So fasting is very important when we're when we're praying. So as Christians or intercessors or prayer warriors, when we come together in prayer, the Lord will certainly move because He said in His Word, one can chase a thousand, but two can chase ten thousand to flight. I'm going, to, I'm going to put everybody to a challenge. And I want you to pray for me. And I'm going to tell you, watch, watch. And I'm going to tell you in just a few days what the Lord has done. I'm, yeah, I want you to pray for me. All, everybody that knows the word of, and, the, and has the power to pray, pray for me. Yes, right? Pray for me. Amen. Amen. Because God wants to do something. And I tell you, I, I, I would be so ex I'm going to be so excited to tell you what God has done. He's a miracle working God. And you know, you, you sit in there at home and that need a miracle. You may have cancer. Uh, you may have some sickness in your body. Let me tell you something. Uh, if you pray and you believe God, you trust him, he will do it. He will, and guess what? You don't have to send no money. You know, it's Jesus is free. Amen. Prayer is free. Uh, you know what? I just want you to pray right now for somebody out there that's watching this show and they they've been praying about some issue that they're going through, uh, and won't God fix it? Yes, He will. Yes, He will. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Dear Lord God, you are able to do exceedingly abundantly yes. above anything we could ask, think, hope, or even imagine according to the power that worketh in us. Father, we pray even now that those who are watching this show at this hour of the night, we pray, Father, that whatever they have a need of, we pray, God, that you would minister to that need. Father, if it's a sickness, if it's cancer, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come against it right now, oh God. We speak death to every cancer cell that's attacking their bodies. We curse it at the root, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Father, that you will release medical and surgical angels to bring about divine healing healing in their body. Lord, whatever it is, if it's a job that they are in need of, Father, yes. we pray that you would open the door of employment opportunity, Father, yes. in the name of Jesus. Father, if it's their children that they are dealing with, God, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would transform their children by the renewing of their minds, yes. that they may prove that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Father, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would minister and meet the need, oh God, for your word Yes. declares hallelujah that you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory so whatever we have need yes. of your word declares that you will provide because you are our provider there is no good thing that you will withhold from those of us who love you so God we lift up everyone tonight we lift up every person who yes. is listening to this show God we lift, we lift up to our pastors in this state we lift up oh God those who are in leadership and government we lift them up to you oh God in the name of Jesus and we pray where all the confusion is God bring order to it right now and we give you the glory honor and the praise for it is in Jesus name we pray and may the Lord bless his people amen, amen. and thank God yes glory Jesus See, look what God is doing Hallelujah. look what God is doing he's moving for you tonight because he heard you he knows you he knows what, he knows what you're going through Hallelujah. And he will fix it. He's fixing it right now. You got to get happy. 
know that God is on your side. You know, it's, it's so awesome to sit here and to see the power of God going through the televisions and healing people uh, and them not giving up, sending no money or anything, anything in. I'm going to tell you something. God is doing something special. This God is doing some great things. He's awesome. Yes. He's yes. awesome. He's wow. awesome. And we can expect nothing less from him than awesome. Yes. Because he's able to do beyond what we could even imagine him doing. Because he's faithful like that. Yes, yes, He's yes. faithful like that. And he loves us. And the thing about God is he really wants to just bless us. Yeah, he wants to bless yeah, the folks tonight. He, he wants and to bless. And he's blessing somebody yes. right now. He wants to yes. bless. Wow. I, yes. You know, it's just so awesome to sit here and to know that you are being blessed right now mm -hmm. by the Most High God. Yes. You know, the, her prayer, she just interceded for you. Her prayer touches God and God moves. That's how it happens. It's just that simple. Can you talk about just the... The presence of the Lord. When you're in the presence of God, what happens? Yes. And like we were talking earlier and sharing earlier that when we get into the presence of God, and we get in his presence through worship. And we get through his presence by adoring and honoring him for who he is. Not so much what he's able to do for us or what he can and have done for us. Yes. But simply because of who he is. And when we come to a place where we recognize who he is and honor him just because of who he is, the Lord will make himself strong in your situation. He will make his presence known. He will step out of his holy habitation into the earth realm where we reside and minister to us right where we are. And he will give us that so that we are witness that the presence of the Lord that we experience this because we want to get to a place where we have an encounter with God. Yes, yes. And we can get that encounter with God through prayer, through worship, through praise. Because again, when you're able to tap into the realm of where He sits, Woo. nothing matters. Nothing matters but being in His presence. Because in His presence is that fullness of joy. And that's what He wants us to experience with Him. He wants us to come into that intimate place with Him. Yes. Where He's able to really speak into our ears. And when we get into that intimate place with God, the enemy can't even touch you there. Yes, yes. The enemy can't even speak to you and put doubt in your spirit there because you're in that presence and having that encounter with God that he wants to have with you. So prayer is so important and I encourage us tonight to constantly be in prayer. Talk to the Lord on yes. a regular basis. Don't allow your time that you come before God in prayer when you're in desperate need of him to move a situation or to move in your life because the question becomes when you go to God and when you're desperate like that in prayer and he comes through for you and answer your request. How excited and how energized are you when you give him praise? Mm. Amen. You so desperately praying, but is your praise as powerful as your press as your prayer? Wow. Uh, there's um, women are going to prisons now more than men, and mm -hmm. as a result, they they are mm -hmm. experiencing. Things that are pretty much strange to me because they're not soft and ladylike anymore. Mm -hmm. They're hard, they're bitter, and they're angry, they're mad. Mm -hmm. But I really believe that they want God. And mm -hmm. most of them don't know how to humble themselves to get God. Could you help some young sisters, sisters out? Yes, God bless you, my young sisters, because when you are in a place like that, I think what it is is that we have come to a place where we don't love ourselves anymore. We don't value who we are. So we settle, we give up, we give in. But God has not called us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Again, he is the manufacturer of our origin and he doesn't make trash. Mm. Everything that he has created has been good. Yes. And so are you. But the Lord wants you to come out of that place where you don't love yourself. He loves you. Yes. He loves you more than you could ever think or imagine him loving you. His love for you is so deep, you can't even reach down and grab it. But God wants you to love yourself. Because when you love yourself and you value who you are as a woman, as a young lady, then people will gravitate to you because you love who you are. Yes. You love, I always say, and I encourage my daughter and I encourage my sons, love you. That's right. I love Lutetia. I love me. I care about me because if you love you, you're going to take good care of you. 
You're not going to let anybody mistreat you or That's mishandle right. you. You're not going to, you don't have to prove anything into anybody because God validates you, not people. That's right. So when you understand who validates you, you don't have to worry about receiving validation from everybody else because you love yourself. Yeah, and, and, and you know, that's awesome. And that's and a lot of these women or young ladies, really deep down inside, they're afraid. Mm -hmm. So what will prayer do for them? Prayer will get that fear off of them because God does not give us the spirit of fear, but he give us the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. God does not want you to walk around in fear. And loving yourself is very important, is very crucial in your walk with God. So you cannot be afraid. Don't be afraid of anything or anybody. God has not given us that spirit. So don't let anybody tell you that you're not valuable, that you're not worth something. You are worth everything. You are valuable. That's right. Listen, we're, we're going to take a break. I'll be right back. Don't move from your seats. Hey, welcome back to It's On Talk Show. And today's show topic is prayer. And I have, again, my special guest, the prayer warrior, Mr. Teacher. How you doing? God bless you. Uh, and we're back. Um, and we were talking about the people not getting their prayer answered. They pray too fast. So, so you shouldn't pray fast, like get down on his blah, 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 back up. And why? Why? Because prayer is a two-way dialogue between you and God. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you take that time to pray, you should pray, make your request, do the, do the adoring, reverencing him for who he is, make your request known unto him. But don't just get back up. Don't just get up quickly. Stay down there a minute. Be quiet. The Lord may want to speak to you at that time, or he may not, but give him the opportunity to be able to speak to your spirit woman or your spirit man and what it is that you're asking God for. For example, if I ask you, and I'm using this as an example for my minister or your colleague, Minister Debbie Winston, okay. she shared, and, and I think it's so important to share with your audience that if I were to ask you for directions yes. and to DC, okay. and I just turn away and walk, away from you and you're probably saying well I, I'm ready to give you the answer that's true but, but you, you walked walk away right. right so it's a dialogue between God and and his people so if you immediately just get up and not wait sometimes it's important if we just be quiet and just hear God but sometimes people want to know how to hear God I mean what is it I mean I know but mm -hmm. could you explain to the audience God was speaking to our spirit our spirit man or our spirit woman in terms of responding to us he, he may do it in a manifestation of the natural but if we are his people yes okay we have and a know relationship because we, yes. know, we, we know his voice that's right we know God's voice we know when he speaks to us and only his voice will we follow after but if you're not in relationship with the Lord then you won't necessarily know his voice right. but God will also speak to our spirit he'll speak to our spirit and and say some things to us in our spirit or he'll use someone else yes. to speak to that situation like for instance you can pray and vent all your frustration tell God all your secrets just he keeps it he is confidential he will keep it but sometimes God will reveal the answer to the man of God, the pastor, and coming from that pulpit, speak exactly what you've been praying for yeah. and give you the answer through that man of God. Because God knows what you need and he knows how to communicate what you need yes. through whatever vessel, through whatever means. If you're not hearing them, he will speak to someone else sometimes and give you the answer. And just tonight you're getting the answer uh, from, from the woman of God. God. Uh, amen. amen. Yeah. Um, you know, there are uh, some folks that just um, think that uh, prayer is so tough and, and God would never listen to them because they've been so bad. They did X, Y, and Z. Why would God hear their prayer? Because he made you. Hello. He created you. He is your father. Now, those who have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, then your prayer is a prayer of repentance. You pray for repentance, and you can do that prayer by going to Romans 10 and 9, and that's the prayer of salvation, that if I confess with the Lord, with my mouth, that Jesus Christ is Lord, and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, the word of God says, you shall be saved. Now, you, wait a minute, you just started something. Um, 
Go ahead and get somebody saved. If you want to get saved, uh, put your hand on the screen and mm -hmm. listen to this woman of God. Repeat these words after me as it's coming from your heart unto the Lord. I confess. I confess. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I've sinned. I've sinned. Against you. Against you. And you only. And you only. Forgive me. Forgive me. I confess. I confess. That Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ. Is Lord. Is Lord. I believe. I believe. In my heart. In my heart. That God raised him. That God raised him. From the dead. From the dead. I declare. I declare. My salvation. My salvation. Help me. Help me. To live a life. To live a life. That is pleasing. That is pleasing. In your sight. In your sight. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 God bless you. You just got saved. Praise and guess God. what? It's just free. It, you know, no pressure, no stress. Yes. You know, yeah, you, you just got saved and, you know, praise the Lord. And now you can start your prayer life. You, you were just forgiven of all your sins. I mean, all of them. You know, you're the man, you're the woman. You know, you're saved now. You know, and you had just start a, start a prayer life. Um, talk to God. Again, like Mr. Lynch just said, you know, these big words. Just keep it real. Keep it simple. Yes. But stay there and commune with God. Uh, listen to Him. And as you begin praying and build that relationship, you will know His voice. His sheep know His voice. And He wants to do something so special for you. He wants, he, thank God He just saved you. And now you are His. He's declaring you. And guess what? The best is yet to come. You know, they often use this saying, the best is yet to come. What does that really mean in God's world? That whatever God has purpose and plans for your life will prevail. Uh-oh. Will prevail. And God does the exceedingly, the abundantly. abundantly, above what we could even think or imagine in our minds. He can do far greater. Yes. So when we say the best is yet to come with him, it is. Wow. It is. That, you know, just imagine you, that yourself but then you're up here somewhere yes. doing fulfilling walking in your purpose mm -hmm. your dreams are coming true yes. you know you, you begin to obtain everything that you always thought or imagined it's, it, it can happen for you you know God wants to bless you you know I believe um, that we are living in the last days and God is showing off through his people that's why he wants to get everybody saved that he possibly can you know, choose ye this day whom you may serve, but choose God. And because he, this is the last days, he wants to demonstrate his presence, his power. You know, can, can we talk about that? God wants to, yeah, he wants to show forth his power. But he is a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on any of us. That's right. He wants us to welcome him in to our space. Mm -hmm. He wants to welcome us to welcome him in to the sanctuary where we worship. So that sanctuary doesn't necessarily have to be a church house. It could be your individual home or your apartment. Welcome him into that place. And when we do that, then we can see and feel the presence of God. I always say, Lord, I want to I wanna feel your presence. Not only that, I want to smell your scent. Yeah. I want to know that you're right there with me. I want to know that I can almost just, just touch you because you're so close. And when we do that, when we just really get to a place and it's all about that we go back to that relationship piece yeah. because he's going to be there and he wants to be there in our lives he wants us he wants to be such a great part of our lives and what we do because truthfully apart from him we can do nothing yeah you know I, I'm, I'm i'm thinking about this young lady that i met she had a, a boyfriend and uh, she broke up with him um and and she she gave her life to christ and she's the happiest woman in the world now mm -hmm. So there is so much joy and peace in God. Yes, it is. When you step away from things that are, that that was one time against God. Yes. You know, having that relationship, it's going to make you a great person. Mm -hmm. You're going to be so pleased with yourself, mm -hmm. and, and that's important. You know, to know your self worth and your value. Um, can you talk a little bit about your book as in reference to um, women? Um, uh, what is the name of the book? Concealed Woman. Yeah, Concealed Woman. Mm -hmm. and can you talk about that Concealed Woman that now uh, begins a prayer life and begin to walk with God? What, 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 what things happen, great things happen for? In that place of mm -hmm. Concealed, now she's taking off that mask. 
Yeah. Because now she knows her self-worth. She knows her value, which is that revealed place. And now I'm not ashamed of who I am. Now God, I know, has forgiven me of my sins. And I don't have to be ashamed. I don't have to walk around in the spirit of guilt and resentment. I don't have to feel any regrets of what mistakes that I made and bad decisions or bad choices. God has forgiven me from all of that. So moving from that concealed woman of not knowing who I am in God, not valuing who I am, always walking around with a mask, trying to pretend that I'm something that I'm not. Now I know who I am. I know my value, I know my worth, I know who validates me, and I know that God has called me for purpose, so now I have to pursue after that purpose so I can possess it. That's right. And that's also uh, relative for uh, women that, uh, that are new to, to the church arena, yes. and they don't know what to do, they're getting in, they're almost lost, but, but they're in the right place. They're in the right place. They're in the right place. So, um, you don't have to, uh, you, can, you can come out from the dark place and, and walk into his light, begin that prayer life, and you will acclimate just like and become that church woman that you, that you really want to be deep down inside. You know, you have women that you can tell, uh, or, or not only women, but men too, they want to possess all the good qualities uh, of the church and but they're coming off the street, they're hard, they stand offish. Mm -hmm. But when they humble themselves the more yes. and begin to pray, then they come around. Mm -hmm. Can you just give a direction to some people who are just coming into the church? Mm -hmm. It starts with the mind. Uh -huh. It starts the way we think and how we process things. So when we come into the church, if we're unchurched, if you yes. will, and you first come into the church, the church is a hospital. Mm -hmm. It is a place where we come for healing, deliverance, restoration, forgiveness of sin. That's where you come. And when you come in that place, and again, establishing a prayer life with God and establishing the relationship with him, is that place that helps you to grow and develop in the things of God. Salvation and accepting the gift of salvation is the easy part. Now you have to walk out the sanctification piece of it, that you're walking out your purpose, God's purpose for your life. And you can come into the church and get the teaching and get the tools that you need so that you can walk a life that is pleasing unto the Lord. That's and right. you don't have to worry about what anybody else says or what anybody thinks about you because the church is there to help you. That's right. To help you, to help you and to, to encourage you and to be there for you and also help you to identify the gifts of God that's in you. The gifts that are used, that God has put in you for the upbuilding of his kingdom here in the earth realm. You know, let's talk about the gifts. There are gifts and talents in us. Yes. And we don't, we don't even know that they're there. They're there. And when people, are, like you say, they come in church, they in church, come in church, when then one woman or guy may say, I want to join a choir, and realizes he or she can sing. Or, be, again, I have to talk about uh, Palmer Temple, my church. My church, too. All right. <laughs> and now a uh, great pastor, uh, he teaches uh, people uh, about God and their self-worth and to discover your talents and you'd be surprised the things that you can do uh, when you uh, come around and get to get with God you know it's in you some things are in you and they won't manifest until those gifts are stirred up and when those gifts are stirred up you will be amazed at yourself is that right? That's right. In terms of and when we talk about the gifts, when we talk uh -huh. about God has given all of us at least one gift. Mm -hmm. And I use my, for my own personal walk with the Lord, I know that my dominant gift is prayer. Uh -huh. I know that my dominant. So once you can identify your dominant giftings, when you can identify what that dominant gift is, whether it's the gift of helps, the gift of faith, the gift of uh, prayer, the gift of administration, whatever that dominant gift is, when you begin to start flowing and functioning, operating in your dominant gift that God has given you, if he has given you a cluster of gifts, those gifts will begin to flow from that dominant gift, therefore complementing each other, where you're able to really do the work of ministry that God has created and called you to do. That's right. Yes. And I tell you, some of your great, greatest preachers and greatest evangelists, they were at one time ungifted until they stirred their, their gifts up. That's it. 
and and after that, wow, look at, I think a uh, great preacher like Bishop Thomas of New Summers Church. Uh, he wasn't always that preacher. I heard him his testimony, but he got in God and he realized he could preach, and oh boy, he can preach. <laughs> um, and, to, and a shout out to Bishop Thomas, a uh, great man of God. Um, so, you know, God wants you to, to be somebody special um, tonight. Uh, life ha lives have been changed. Lives have been saved tonight. Uh, you, you've been taught about prayer and the things to do and what you must do. And it's real. And I'm telling you, um, you know what? When, when I believe that when a person, uh, life turns around, they become a Christian, uh, that God and all the angels rejoice. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's so yes, amazing. It is. God and the angels rejoice because one of his has now come into the fold. That's right. Yes. So, you know, don't be ashamed. We, we would like to welcome you uh, into this great kingdom um, uh, of heaven uh, right here on earth. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, you are a part of this family now. Uh, you're bro my brother, my sister, and I'm so excited to have you. And so is Letitia. Uh, excited to have you. Um, now, uh, now, when a person comes into th this kingdom, um, uh, could you explain what happens in heaven? Well, the angels rejoice, right. even for one that comes and accepts the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And those who, have, who, took, who basically said that prayer, and that prayer of salvation, I need to encourage you and I need you to understand, very important point, that once you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, understand and know that the enemy is mad. Yeah. That the enemy is upset that you gave your life to the Lord and he's going to try and do whatever he can to pull you back out. But God's word said you are can nothing or anyone pluck you out of God's hand. You are now sealed in the Lord. So no matter what comes your way, you are sealed in God. Your salvation is sound. So just know that the enemy is going to come after you because he does not want you to know God. He don't want you to know and have a relationship with the Lord. So he's going to try anything to prevent you from having that. Amen. So just be aware and, um, and be mindful. But greater is he that's in you now. I'm talking about God in you now. Yes. Than he that's in the world. Amen. We'll be right back. Don't move from your seats. We're back um, about prayer. I'm telling you, prayer changes everything. Sister yes. Letitia, um, there are so many folks out here that are on drugs. Yes. Um, they hate themselves because they picked it up for the first time mm -hmm. and that thing is controlling their life and they're sick of it, they're yes. tired of it they hate what's going on mm -hmm. can you tell this person tonight that God wants to deliver him or her mm -hmm. he's going to take the taste of that thing away from them yes. through prayer through prayer can you talk to him Yes, the Lord, that, that addiction that you have, that's, that's a spirit straight from the pit of hell. Yes, it is. And it's controlling your, your ability to live a life of liberty and freedom. But God does not want you to be in that place of bondage because that's what it is. The power of God, through the power of intercession, we can pray and believe God to curse at the root the very desire that you have to do this, this, this substance, to do this drug. God is able to do it. God is able to do it. And our prayer for you is that the Lord will help you and restore you back to a healthy place where you don't need a substance. But it's going to take prayer to do it. And it's going to take fasting to do it. Because the word of God is truly, his word will not return unto him void. But will accomplish everything we send it out to accomplish. So we curse at the root drug addiction. We curse at the root, the very taste of it, the desire for it. We curse it at the root. We condemn its actions mm. off of your life. And we believe, God, that you will be delivered and restored back to a healthy place where you are living and breathing and moving in the things of God, living for God, serving God, walking in the gifts of God, and being used of God, and being able to reach back and help another person who is addicted to drugs and bring them up out of that dark, damp, and twisted place to a place 
of freedom that Jesus Christ died for you to have. You don't have to do drugs, but I know sometimes it, you, you taste it and you get it, that you get caught up in it. And it's a substance, it's a spirit that attaches itself and won't let you go. But God is able to do it. Uh, through prayer, I'm telling you, your life can change tonight. Yes. Uh, and I'm telling you, it's real. I know so many people that have had that addiction problem, but they mm -hmm. began to pray and God moved on their behalf. Yes. And also for you weed smokers, it's, that's a drug. Yeah. It's a spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, and God wants you to, have, to, don't have, to, to, to not smoke it because it's destroying your life. Yes. You know, you're losing. You can't win. You know, Sister Tisha, because that spirit is so strong, yes, drug yes. addiction, alcohol, weed. Could you just, just say a, a specific prayer for the release of that off these people's lives? Yes. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, O oh God, as humble as we know how. We come, dear Lord God, standing in the gap for those who are on drugs, who are addicted to drugs. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the anointing of God, Jesus. by the word of God, we come against the addiction. Yes. We come against it in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, we bind it up in the name of Jesus. We curse at the root the addiction. We curse at the root. We destroy. We speak death to it, God. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we pray even now, oh God, that you would deliver them from the drug addiction, God, that you would set them free. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. we pray that you would do a miraculous work in yes. those who are dealing with drug addiction, God. We pray that you would do a miraculous thing in their lives. Father, we pray that you would move by your spirit and by your power. We pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you would rebuke the enemy from them, oh God, long enough that they will make that intelligent decision and say, I'm tired. I can't do it anymore. Yes. I don't want it anymore. God, release me. Loose me from the bound of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, God, set them free right now. Lord, we come against it in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree the power of God. We declare and decree that the Lord is able. God, Jehovah Rapha, you are a healer. God, heal them, deliver them yes. from, this, from this drug addiction. But you are able to do it, God. We trust you. We calling on you. We we're depending on you. So, Father, we pray that you would meet them right where they are, in the room that they are, the car that they are, the house that they're in, wherever they are, God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would release angels to them right now, oh God, to curse at the root the addiction and set them free, oh God, that they may live a life of purpose, that they may live a life that yes. is pleasing unto you. And we give you all the glory, the honor, and the absolute praise. Yes. And we declare the victory over now now yes. in Jesus name amen amen hallelujah you got declared that you're Glory. free I'm in your free right Jesus. now thank God hallelujah, hallelujah. amen mm. God is moving uh, so mightily and sister Letitia uh, the church is going through a, a lot uh, uh, and pastors are uh, going through so much mm. they've been attacked mm. so much uh, and I, I believe that if the church as a whole would just continue to lift our pastors up, yes, that they'll be all right. Yeah. Uh, it is so sad to see some of the sad situations, um, but I know Satan is attacking, and and, and you know because the the shepherd is someone that we need uh, mm -hmm. uh, to keep it together. Uh, that 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 has that communion with God. And Satan is throwing everything their way yes. to discourage them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And it's sad. Uh, 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 and and uh, some have fallen to uh, uh, the temptations. Mm -hmm. But many stand strong. Yes. Because they have that prayer life. Yes. You know, so I, I say to the uh, every, uh, pastors to hold on. Yes. Keep your head up maintain prayer life and, and worship God for he he that come will uh, he that say he, he come he will come uh, and, and I, I tell you uh, can you just give a word to the pastors to encourage them 
Praise God for our pastors. Praise God for the men and women of God who serve the office of the pastor. We thank and praise God for them today. And we know that God has called you to a great work. And I call on the intercessors of every church where your pastor is, that you will lift him up, that you will constantly keep him in your prayer, that you will pray for him in season and out of season because the office of the pastor is a very serious office to occupy so we bless God for the pastors that have accepted this this work of ministry for the people of God to shepherd the people of God so we lift them up in prayer but I I really really pull on the intercessors yes. to pray for our pastors to lift them up because they need our prayers they yes. need us to go into session with God on their behalf yeah uh, yeah I, I'm just so um Please, you pray for them uh, um, and gave them a word because uh, so much is happening. And, uh, you, you know, there's some young men uh, that's walking around, the, the ones with pants down, mugged out, hard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you talk to them, and they're some nice guys. Mm -hmm. So everybody's putting on this image, mm -hmm. uh, wanting to be somebody that they're not. Mm -hmm. And some of these guys, when they turn, turn to God, they be, they're happy. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's stop fighting to be a kind person. Yes. Uh, it's okay to be nice, uh, to be kind, because that negative image really doesn't work. It does promote joy, life, happiness. Mm -hmm. um, and I say to you brothers, begin a prayer life. Um, that's when you become a real man. Uh, real men love Jesus. Could you elaborate on that? Yes, a real man is not afraid to pray. A real man will take that time to pray, especially if, if he has a family. He's going to pray for his family. That's right. He's going to cover his family in prayer. He's going to do what he needs to do to make sure his family is okay. And he understands that prayer is needed to, for his family. And he's going to take the time and spend time in prayer for his family. Yeah, yeah. So I bless God for the real men who prays and not afraid to pray. That's God bless true. you. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh you know, I can just uh thinking about the brothers at the church. Uh, you know, we have good men and their brother with they have families, they pray and they, they worship God. It's just such a beautiful thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So I encourage our brother that's in the faith to continue on, maintain your prayer life, uh uh because people are people are watching you. Yes. Um so your prayer life does make a difference. And, you know, I'm, I'm asking you right now to pray for young men, uh, especially in the city of Baltimore. They're going through so much. Uh, please pray for them and keep them before God, that God will deliver them and set them free. And uh, because they, they really want to be nice guys, but they can't. They're caught up, especially those ones that are in the gangs. Uh, they don't really want to be there. They're searching for love and because the fathers are not home, you know, uh, that's all they want. They just want to be somebody to say, hey, I love you, man. Um, so I, we are praying for you. And I'm asking the TV audience to pray for the young men. They, they really need your prayers. Uh, they need God. And they really want God. They don't know how to get him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So... Uh, what's, what, what, what encouragement would you give them? So our prayer would be that the Lord would just put somebody in their path to remind them that God is still on his throne and that God wants to bless their lives and that he loves them so much that he wants them to be everything that he has called them to be. So we pray that God will send someone to minister to them, to minister first salvation and to encourage them that, you know, God created you for purpose. You're not here just for naught. You're here for a reason. So we thank and praise God and we pray that the Lord will bring you to a place of wholeness emotionally mentally spiritually psychologically physically in all those areas and aspects of your life uh we again we would like to take say thank you for watching this show uh, and i i pray for you that you'll get a prayer life and i'm, I'm going to close out with prayer from our very fine minister teacher 
Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to talk about prayer. We thank you, O oh God, for your presence. And we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that you would bless your people everywhere, that you would bless our pastors, that you would bless those in leadership. God, we pray that you would bless those who are addicted on drugs. Bless our young people, God. Bless our young men, our husbands, our mothers, our wives. God, bless your people. And we will be so careful to give you all the glory, honor, and the praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And may God keep you and peace. And I'm out.